in prison for 17 years. That's all I knew. I knew nothing about freedom. And now being home for less than an hour, I had my phone in my hand. I was thrust into the world of social media and we were on our way to our first stop. My first stop for the day with my family was McDonald's. That would be my first meal, my first opportunity to taste food as a free person after 17 years of incarceration. And I know some of you like McDonald's. Yes, McDonald's. Why? It was on the way to the DMV. And I was excited. I didn't really care where I was getting food from. I was just happy to be free and I have the rest of my life in front of me. That was all I was thinking. That and I couldn't wait to get some street coffee. I was tired of drinking kefi all those years, just being honest. I remember when we got to the McDonald's, everybody ordered their food. My uncle ordered his food, my cousin, my wife, and then everybody walked off. And here's the issue. We weren't at the register or you know, talking to a person. We were at the touch screen and everybody had walked up to the screen effortlessly and ordered their meal. No hesitation. And there I stood, lost, confused, dazed. Yes, I had started to understand what a touch screen was when I had the opportunity to use something called the JP4 while I was incarcerated. And then, yes, my smartphone now in hand. But this was a totally different menu and my brain did not understand or fathom the way that the options were being presented. I simply wanted to order my food. I didn't even know how to back out of the last screen that my wife was in. And her being excited with the rest of the family that had picked me up, had shuffled off to use the restroom, etc. before we sat down to eat. And I was stuck, lost, confused. And I remember suddenly a lady saying, hey man, are you okay? And I snapped out of it. I can't explain to you the thought process that happened in that brief encounter and exchange other than it was full of anxiety. It was full of just me being reminded in the moment just how lost I really was when it came not just to technology, but people. The speed of things. When we were driving to McDonald's, the cars were so fast. And yes, I had been in vehicles before, but man, this was a little different. I hadn't been in a car forever. It was either some sort of prison bus or prison van maybe at best. Life was different. There would be a bunch of obstacles and hurdles and I would need somebody to be patient enough and aware enough that would be able to tell me, hey, it's okay, I got you. And I remember my wife walking over in that moment and me being frustrated, not being able to communicate with her in the patient way that I needed to and saying, hey, babe, I wish you would have just stayed here. I don't know what's going on. I kind of snapped. <laughs> And it wasn't me cussing or being vulgar. It was the way I said things, the tone of which I said things. You see, while I was in prison, I was programmed. I was talking to the people around me in a very specific way. It's all men and the environment tends to be aggressive or let's just say overly assertive. And I remember my tone saying to her, why'd you leave me? I'm supposed to be happy this is my first few moments at freedom after 17 years of incarceration, but the anxiety which now manifested in a form of frustration and was verbalized towards my main support, man, it just wasn't a good moment. And I caught myself and luckily she was patient enough with me in that moment and said, baby, it's okay. My fault. I understand. But honestly, I should have been apologizing in that moment and I should have been more patient with her because what I stress to people when they're coming home from prison is that our loved ones are learning how to have us with them, too, in that moment. It's new for them, too. We should give them grace just like we want them to give us grace. That was the first moment of frustration, and we moved past that. I got my food ordered, sat down, and took a bite of the most delicious uh, steak croissant ever in coffee, and it tasted like Roof Chris to this day, I tell that story. Now, does McDonald's taste like that? No, but shout out to McDonald's nonetheless. I was grateful for that first meal, grateful for that first moment, grateful for the opportunity to be able to sit there with my family, but nonetheless, 
the whole time, looking around me, hearing the sounds, seeing how people were moving, and just wondering how I was going to fit back into this place, into this society, into this world. I had been gone for 16 years, 11 months. <sighs> it was time to move on. I had already told my wife a few weeks prior, look, I want to do this, this, and this. And one of the things that I wanted to do was go to the DMV that first day. And it was important because the very next day would be going to Georgia. I wouldn't be staying in the Commonwealth of Virginia where I did my prison time. And I had an opportunity to stop at the DMV to pay my fines off and find out how I could get my license back. And I was excited. And we made our way to the DMV. And I walked in. And I'll never forget the moment. I was happy. You know, I was, hey, I'm free. Now I had shook off the anxiety of being at McDonald's trying to figure out how to order my meal off a digital touchscreen menu. And I walked up to the counter. I said, hey, here's my paper. I uh, just trying to figure out how I could pay my fines or what I needed to do to get my license back. And she looked at me and she said, one moment. She said, yeah, just go ahead and stand over there. She said, just get in that line. They're going to take your picture. They'll give you a temporary driver's license and they'll send your real one to whatever address you put down. I said, what? She, I said, I can get my license right now? She said, yeah. Now, most people, one of the biggest hurdles and obstacles when they come home is being able to get their driver's license. This is a fact. And in a moment where I should have been celebrating, oh no, I acted like it. Outwardly, I looked excited, but inwardly, I wasn't ready. And me receiving my license meant that there would be less of an excuse when it came time for me to get back on the road. Nonetheless, I couldn't let my family know that the anxiety was there. And I made my way across, got in line, and eventually I was able to stand there and take my picture. Got my license. <laughs> 